All right. Hey, good evening, everybody. It is Thursday, uh, September the 22nd, 2022. And um, today I'm pre-recording this. It's about, for me, it's 3.30 right now. So it's about an hour and a half uh, before right now. Um, and uh, because I'm, because like I did last week, this Thursday and then next Thursday, uh, I have a class that I have to teach that overlapping with this. But um, so today... Um, we are going to look at the holiday Rosh Hashanah. Uh, it is our, our Rosh Hashanah or Rosh Hashanah. It is on uh, we're gonna, the era of Rosh Hashanah, the evening of Rosh Hashanah begins at sundown um, this coming Sunday. And of course, we're going to have our, our gathering uh, this Sunday at 630. So I hope that you're able to join us uh, for that and, uh, and come and bring uh, something sweet. Um, but we're going to look today at, um, this will be more of a teaching about Rosh Hashanah. Um, and really it's the, the biblical holiday, and I'll talk about that in a minute. I've entitled today's, um, today's uh, daily manna, Yom Teruah, uh, which is the day of the shout or the day of alarm. Um, but this is, uh, Rosh Hashanah means head of the year. Rosh is head Hashanah is the year, head of the year, and it's become the, in, in Jewish tradition, the Jewish New Year. Um, and, and it's a, Rosh Hashanah is, it, it's on the first of the, the Hebrew month of Tishri. And so it be, it's the beginning of a 10-day stretch called the Days of Awe, or the High Holy Days. Um, so the, they begin with Rosh Hashanah on the first of Tishri, and it concludes with uh, the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, on the 10th of Tishri. And unlike any other holiday, uh, any of the, of the other Jewish holidays, what's unique about um, these two holidays in particular, these days of all, is that they have nothing at all to do with um, a particular historical event in uh, Jewish history. So they, they're not somehow to inspire our sort of nationalistic fervor. Um, and they don't really point to something that has to do with agriculture or, or harvest or anything like that. These are two um, holidays, two uh, moedim, which are appointed feasts or convocations that are set apart, two of the seven that are set apart that are are fully and totally um, spiritual in nature. They're in, while everything is pointing to the Lord, of course, the harvest and, and or, or a historical event like Passover is rooted in history, but it's ultimately rooted in what the Lord was doing. That's neat. There's none of that with Rosh Hashanah or Yom Teruach and uh, uh, Yom Kippur. And so we, what happens is we have these, these days of all this 10-day this period of time that is uh, is a season of reflection and repentance when when we are called upon to evaluate our spiritual condition right to recognize how far short we fall of what God intends and where he requires us to be um, and so the the month prior to so the month of the we're in we're presently in the coming at the end of the month of Elul and then Tishri, the first of Tishri, is, uh, begins on Sunday evening. So the 30 days prior, between the 30 days of Elul and the 10 days of uh, the days of awe, ending in the 10th of Tishri, this is a 40-day period of reflection, of, of repentance, of saying, Lord, search our hearts. Um, and so... So as today we'll go through, we'll go through this um, as a teaching. It's it's never, even a teaching is not intended to simply be intellectual, but it's to may the Lord what the Lord is trying to do, what He's longing to do, pierce our hearts. The so Tishri is the seventh month. It's not actually the first month. It's the, we call it the head of the year Rosh Hashanah, but but it's not actually the first month. And, it's the seventh month. And so the month of Elul is like the sixth month, right? Or it is the sixth month. And so just as the seventh month is the seventh day is Shabbat, uh, is the holiest day of the week, is a day of rest. Um, the sixth 
the sixth day is a day of preparation for the Shabbat. So in the same way, the sixth month is like a season of preparation for what we're asking the Lord to do. And this, what, when you're looking at this season of the sounding of the trumpets, uh, the sounding of the alarm, and then the day of atonement, um, it's a season of preparation, of preparing our hearts. And so the shofar, during the month of Elul, um, traditionally the shofar is blown at the end of the weekday morning services to get the attention of people. Um, and to, to during this period of time to focus on making things right, on asking for forgiveness from people that you may have wronged. Um, and so, uh, but Rosh Hashanah, is not actually, that phrase, the term, is more traditional than anything. It is not used in the biblical text to refer to this occasion, right? The feast of, it's called the Feast of Trumpets, or Yom Teruach, the day of the shout, the day of alarm. Um, and so, because the word Teruach, at the root of that is the word Ruach, has to do with the, your voice. And so it's not simply about sounding the the shofar, I, you know, I, I've got a shofar here. It's not simply about sounding the shofar. It's it's about lift, making a shout. So we'll see in like Psalm eighty one later that the 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 call of to make a shout unto the Lord is whether it's a shout to Him um, or sounding the shofar. Um, it's it's uh, it has to do with something to do with making that shout, and and really the focus is on listening for the shout, on listening for the Lord's voice. Um, there are the in the scriptures the the and 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 then traditionally the, the sounding of the shofar is is a picture of the voice of God. So we have, like when we have, um, well, I'll talk about this in just a little bit. Um, but uh, Rosh Hashanah, again, it, come, it begins, Yom Shurach is the, the first day of the seventh month. We read about it. Let's look at Leviticus 23, verses 23 to 25. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, speak to the children of Israel, saying, in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you are to have a Shabbat rest, a memorial of blowing. And here in TLV, it says shofarot, but the word in Hebrew is actually teruah, uh, is the memorial of the shout or the memorial, the remembrance of the shout of the or of lifting up um, of your your voice or of blowing shofars, a holy convocation. Uh, you are to do no regular work, and you're to present an offering made by fire to Adonai. We read about it in Numbers chapter 29, uh, beginning in verse 1. On the first day of the seventh month, you're to have a sacred assembly. You're to do no lab laborious work. It is for you a day for sounding the shofar. You are to prepare a burnt offering as a pleasing aroma to Adonai, one young bull from the herd, one ram, and seven male lambs, a year old without flaw. With their grain offering uh, of fine flour mixed with oil, three-tenths of an ephah with the bull, two-tenths with the ram, and one-tenth with each of the lambs, as well as one male goat as a sin offering to make atonement for yourselves. Also offer the burnt offering with the for the month with its grain offering, the regular burnt offering with its grain offering, and the appropriate drink offerings as a pleasing aroma to Adonai as an offering by fire. So on the first of Tishri, right, at the sound of the shofar, an instrument that's made from a, a curved ram's horn, um, all regular work was to cease. Right? This was, this was going to set the Feast of Trumpets apart from the other Hebrew months. Every Hebrew month, the first of the month is Rosh Chodesh, is the first of the month. So it's also a, a moed, a, a, one of the holy convocations. But, but, um, but on the first of Tishri, it was different. Right, the, the, I mean, every month there were sacrifices at the beginning of each month, but on Tishri, uh, Yom Shuruach required another set of sacrifices uh, in addition to the regular. There's the one, one bullock, one ram, seven male lambs with the proper meal offerings, uh, along with the, the male goes for a sin offering that were to be presented in addition to the offerings of the new month. Um, so 
in the Torah, in reality, so our tradition, and we, for a number of different, I, there's a number of different ideas around it, but the word Rosh Hashanah, head of the year, um, uh, is, is, it's considered to be more of the beginning of the, of the agricultural year, in terms of the harvest, and, and so forth, but, um, or when, but the beginning of the year in the Torah is the, in the month of Nisan, right, or, or around Passover. In Exodus chapter 12, too, the Lord says, this month, speaking of Nisan, will mark the beginning of months for you. It is to be the first month of the year for you. Um, so, so the reality is the name Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah is more traditional than it is biblical. The biblical uh, day is Yom Terah, is the sound, the day of of the shout, the day of alarm. Um, so the uh, the call of the shofar reminded the Israelites that the seventh month had begun, right? Um, and so you have the four different sounds that we traditionally um, blow, and I'm I don't know if I'm going to try them. Because I'm not so great at them. Uh, well, it's the, gonna sound weird, it's gonna sound weird because I'll be mic'd up here. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll just. So the first one is called the tikia. The tikia. You have tikia, tikia, shevarim, teruah, tikia, get a la. So you've got four different sounds. Tikia is a pure, unbroken sound. It calls you to search your heart. Now the tikia would be blown. You know, let's try. Does that sound weird? It sounds hard. Okay. Um, and it, it had the sense of, like, every hour on the hour, all is well. You know, listen, pay attention to it. Let it get your attention. You have the Shevarim, which is three broken blasts. Yeah, I'm awesome at that. Um, we all have our gifts. And that one's not mine. So it's and the tiki or the shevarim um, was often sounded when there would be um, the changing of the guard or when the king would be coming as a the king would be making his way. It was to get your attention. There's something is shifting. Something is changing. And then you have the teruah, which this is. This is what this day is called, the day of Teruah, which is like nine or more broken blasts. It'd be like, do, 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 No. Not bad. All right. Thank you, son. So this is, when you hear that, it's an alarm. It's to get your attention. Something is, you need to wake up. You need to pay attention. There is danger, right? That's the Teruah. And then you have the tekiah gadala, which is a long, un, you know, unbroken sound. Um, and so it's this really pay attention. This is what we, uh, this is that final sound, you know, that at the last trumpet, you know. And so this is when usually people are all going to try to see how much, how long they can really let it go. And I can't do it for very long, but here. And so one of the beautiful things in, in tradition is that the rabbis say that on Yom Turak, on Rosh Hashanah, that it is our duty to hear the call of the shofar. So the, sho the shofar is symbolic of the voice of the Lord. And so if the Lord, so you're listening with intent, right? The, oh, an, an open ear is the call is the is is an a reflection of I'm listening for your voice. I want to hear what you're saying to me, Lord. Are you giving me a tikia all is well? Right? Are you are you giving me a prepare your heart? Something's about to change. You're about to make a turn here, or there's going to be a shift. 
Is there a, am I open to hear, am I listening for the alarm of the Lord? Am I listening for what you have to say to me? Am I aware of you trying to get my attention? And then the, finally, of course, you have the, the gedolah. Am I, will we be ready when the Lord uh, returns? And, and so the rabbis say that if you just hear the echo of the shofar, you've not fulfilled your obligation to really listen, to hear the shofar itself. You're to avail yourself to hearing the sound. And in the same way, we're to listen for the voice of the Lord. Not to hear him along the, you know, you can hear someone's voice and not pay attention to what they're saying. They're like background noise. And he's not to be background noise. This is a season as we prepare our hearts for Yom Kippur, for the day of atonement, that there is this, Lord, speak to me, show me, search me, know me. It's a season of reflection. And, and so this is, and of course this is, the beginning of the year, you know, for uh, all of us, it's, it's interesting. I, there is, maybe because growing up, this is when school starts, um, but there always is this sense at this time of year of a season of newness, that this is a new season. There's a new thing uh, that's happening here. But again, that's Rosh Hashanah as the new year is traditional. Uh, the biblical new year is in the month of Nisan. Now, in the scripture, the shofar is used in a number of different ways, right? It was, we, and I've got these listed for you. You can see it was, it was sounded uh, at the giving of the, sh- of the Torah uh, when, when Moses received the Torah. Verse 19 of Exodus 19. When the sound of the shofar grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him with a thunderous sound. Then Adonai came down onto Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain. Adonai called Moses to the top of the mountain, so Moses went up. So there is the shout of the Lord, the thunderous sound that brings his instructions, that brings his Torah. Listen for the instructions of the Lord. The uh, shofar was blown during, as a signal during a time of war, and that's the, the teruach. It's blown at the start of the jubilee year. There's freedom that's coming. Your debts are paid, are covered. There's newness, a new beginning. It was blown during the coronation services of a new king. Um... It was a sign of the regathering of dispersed Israel. It was sounded as a warning of danger, and it will be sounded at the arrival of the Messiah. And so there are all of these different associations with the sounding of the alarm, the sounding of the, of the shofar. Um, again, to listen, to turn your ear to hear what the Lord would say. And there are different themes that are associated with the holiday. It's uh, a, around the Lord as it's considered traditionally, again, that it, as the birthday of the year. This is when the world was created. So there's a focus on God as creator. There's a focus on God as king, um, that, he is, uh, that he is king, and there is a focus on God as judge. He is our creator. He is our king. He is our judge. And then central to the celebration of trumpets um, every year traditionally is, um, is what we call the Akeda which is the binding of Isaac that we read about in in, uh, Genesis uh, 22. And um, so that's, of course, when the Lord um, calls Abraham to sacrifice his only son, to sacrifice Isaac. And and then the Lord provides as a substitute for Isaac a ram in a thicket. And so that ram's horn, there's this connection between uh, that ram's horn, and then the sounding of the shofar. Um, so this is a memorial, a remembrance of the Lord's faithfulness to Abraham, of his faithfulness to keep his promises. We see um, the Yom Teruach, or Rosh Hashanah, um, in other places in the Hebrew Bible. Um, now, there's not really any mention of Yom Teruach between the giving of the Torah and then the return from Babylonian c- captivity. So it was likely very much neglected as was so much of what God had called his people to be. There wasn't really, um, there weren't really good old days. It was an illusion that the people had ever walked in faithfulness to the Torah, ever, right? So even under Josiah, the spiritual leader, renewal under Josiah uh, indicates that all the festivals, Passover, uh, all of them had been neglected. But upon returning from exile, we read this in Ezra chapter 3, verse 1. 
When the seventh month arrived, seventh month, so this is the first of Tishri, and the sons of Israel were settled in towns, the people gathered together as one man in Jerusalem. Then Jeshua, son of Josadak, his fellow Kohanim, Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and his associates began to build the altar of the God of Israel in order to offer burnt offerings on it as written in the Torah of Moses, the man of God. So they're preparing this altar, which of course will, will be used on the 10th of Tishri on Yom Kippur. Verse 6, it says, From the first day of the seventh month, Yom Turah, they began to offer burnt offerings to Adonai, though the foundation of the temple of Adonai had not been laid. We read about the first of Tishri in Nehemiah in, at the very end of chapter 7 rolling into chapter 8. It says, So the, the Kohanim, the Levites, the gatekeepers, the singers, some of the people, and the temple servants, even all Israel dwelt in their towns. Then the seventh month came, and the children of Israel were in their towns. Then all the people were brought as a single body into the plaza that was before the water gate. And they said to Ezra the scribe, Bring out the Torah scroll of Moses that Adonai had commanded Israel. Verse 2, Ezra the Kohen brought the Torah before the assembly, which included men and women and all who could understand what they heard. This happened on the first day of the seventh month. So he read it before the plaza in front of the water gate from first light until midday in the presence of the men and women and others who could understand. And all the people listened attentively on the first of Tishri to the scroll of Torah, to the instruction of the Lord. They availed their ear to what is the Lord saying. All who would hear, all who could understand. Ezra the scribe stood on a high wooden platform constructed for this purpose. Verse 5. Ezra opened the scroll inside of all the people, for he was above the pe all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Ezra blessed Adonai, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, as they lifted up their hands. Then they bowed down and worshipped Adonai with their faces to the ground. The Levites, and go through these names, uh, instructed the people in the Torah while the people were standing in their place. Verse 8, they read from the Torah scroll of God, distinctly explaining it and giving insight. Thus they understood what was read. So it was about gaining understanding of what of the instructions of the Lord. And then Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the Kohen scribe, and the Levites who were teaching the people said to all the people, Today is holy as Kadosh to Adonai your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people had been weeping when they heard the words of the Torah. But they recognized that their guilt. They recognized their failures. They recognized this is why we were in exile. We have not been faithful to the instructions of the Lord. But the word of the Lord comes to them and he says, uh, so he said to them, go eat choice food, drink sweet drinks, and send portions to those who have nothing ready. For today is kadosh to our, to our Lord, is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of Adonai is your strength. It's a day of rejoicing, right? There's, there's, the Lord has given, there's a renewal, there's newness on this first of Tishri. And then the Levites quieted all the people saying, hush, for today is holy. Do not grieve. So all the people departed to eat and drink to send portions and, and to celebrate with great joy because they came to understand the words that were explained with them, right? So, they're, so this is where the idea of even um, coming to terms with our needing God's forgiveness of our failure to have obeyed his word in the lead up to the tent, to Yom Kippur, uh, is associated then with what we see in this passage. Um, Ezekiel um, Ezekiel, it, he is, his vision is, uh, he's looking at this future temple um, that is, is, it's this amazing passage beginning in, well, here's in Ezekiel 40. And he actually is the only, he uses the, the actual phrase Rosh Hashanah, but it's not on the first of Tishri here when he uses it. But he says, in the 25th year of our exile, in the, Rosh Hashanah, in the beginning of the year. So he's just using it in that way. He says, in the 10th day of the month, in the 14th day, 14th year after the city was struck down, on that very day, the hand of Adonai was on me and he brought me there. So that's where you see the phrase Rosh Hashanah used in scripture, but it's not in association with Yom Teruk. Um, and then the prophets compare their message to the sound of the shofar, right? In Ze Zephaniah 1, 
uh, verse 14, he's, he says, The great day of Adonai is near, near and coming very quickly. The sound of the day of Adonai is bitter. The shouting of the warrior is there. So there's this, he goes, verse 16, A day of shofar and alarm against the fortified cities and against high corner towers. So this is a day, this alarm, this is the, the message of the prophets. Of course, Psalm 81, we've looked at in the past, is devoted to Yom Teruah. Uh, Psalm 81, verse 2 says, Sing for joy to God our strength. Shout, Ruach, shout to God, the God of Jacob. Lift up a song and sound a tambourine, a sweet lyre with a harp. Blow the shofar at the new moon at the full moon for the day of our festival, right? So you've got the new moon, the full moon. So that would be, the new moon would be, well, the full moon. So the new moon is going to be the first of, if it's the day of our festival, it's going to, that's going to be the first of Tishri with Rosh Hashanah. And then the full moon um, for the day of our festival would be uh, Sukkot, uh, the Feast of Tabernacles. Um, that's always on a full moon. You'll notice the first night, the 15th of Tishri, every year, the first night of Sukkot is always a full moon um, because it's a lunar, it's a lunar calendar so that you can, it's set to the moon so you can know uh, the first, the beginning of Sukkot is always a full moon. So, so this could be about, this day of our festival could be about Rosh Hashanah. It could be about Sukkot. There's a, a rejoicing on both. Um, to some degree, and there's, there is the sounding of the shofar. He says, for it is a decree for Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob. Um, and, then, and then the psalm ends by calling God's people to, to repentance, and, and really in the middle of it, even pointing to Passover. And he says in verse eight, you called out in trouble and I rescued you. I answered you from the hiding place of thunder. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. Hear my people, I will admonish you. If you would listen to me, O Israel, let there be no foreign God among you and you shall not worship any alien God. I am Adonai, your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. This is the call of the Lord when we say, Lord, search our hearts. What are you speaking to us? He says, listen to me and let me correct you. Let me admonish you. Let me instruct you. Instruct you. If only you would listen, I have good things for you says in verse 12, but my people did not listen to my voice. Israel was not willing to be mine, so I gave them over to the stubbornness of their heart to walk in their own counsels. Oh, that my people would listen to me. That Israel would walk in my ways. I would soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate Adonai would cringe before him. Their time of doom would be forever, but you would be fed with the finest wheat. With the honey out of a rock, would I satisfy you? Right. So it's this is the call of the Lord when he when we don't we're not we're to avail our ears to hear what he has for us and not continually just let him be background noise. The shofar is blowing. It doesn't matter if the alarm is blowing and you neglect that alarm, then it's then your destruction is certain. The Lord in in trying to do that, it can be annoying. Ah, stop it. But he's getting our attention to in, in instructing us because he wants, he says, open your mouth wide and I would fill, fill you. You would be fed with the finest wheat, with honey out of a rock. Would I satisfy you? And Joel Chapter two, it opens with verse one, blow the shofar in Zion, sound an alarm, which is the Ruach, on my holy mountain. Let all the living in the land tremble for the day of Adonai is coming. Surely it is near. Skip ahead to verse 12. So the, the alarm is sounding and here's the cry of the alarm. The Lord, yet even now declares Adonai, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and lamenting. Rend your hearts, not your garments. And turn to Adonai your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, abundant in mercy, and relenting about the calamity due. Who knows? He may turn and relent and may leave a blessing behind him, so there may be a grain offering and a drink offering for Adonai your God. Blow the shofar in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Proclaim an assembly. 
the Lord, even on, on th- during this season, it's a good reminder. We should always be saying, now not waiting for once a year, of course, to say, Lord, what are you saying to me? Is this a tekiya? Is this a shevarim? Is this a turak? Is this an alarm? Is this a change? Are you, re- are you can- assuring me all is well? What's happening here? Give me ears to hear your voice and then a heart to actually respond because look, you even see in Psalm 81 where the Lord says, I, you know what? You ignored it. You, you rejected my call to you. And so I gave you what you wanted. I gave you over to the desires of your heart. And now you find yourself in, in a bad place. He's, and he calls again, if only you would turn your hearts to me. On this day of the shout, during this season, on the day of the shout, on this Yom Torah, may our hearts be open to hear the alarm of the Lord or to hear what he's saying. Turn your ears to him and respond in obedience. Amen? All right, well, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom, shalom. Have a beautiful day.